bring this down a little bit. Thank you, Ken. This evening, we've already heard and we will hear more the word community. And this should be no surprise as the restoring, building, and strengthening of community is at the very heart of the Charitable Foundation's mission and purpose, at the very heart of what nonprofit organizations do all over New Hampshire. Much has been written about our torn social fabric. So many in our society wake up feeling cut off from any sense of family, community, or neighborhood. Belonging is on the wane, and isolation is on the rise. In such a fragmented culture as ours, it is no wonder, sadly, that there are nearly 50,000 suicides every year in America. And that's more than double than the 70,000 deaths, and, and, and then there's more than 70,000 deaths to drug addiction. That is more than double the total number of Americans who died during the whole Vietnam War. And those are annual statistics. Recently, I read a powerful, truthful, yet hopeful piece by columnist David Brooks, who started something called Weave, the Social Fabric Project at the Aspen Institute, what he calls a social movement of community renewal. Its first core principle and idea is that social isolation is the problem underlying a lot of our other problems. The second core idea is that this problem is being solved and addressed by people around the country at the local level who are building community and weaving the social fabric. And he calls them weavers. So I'm a bishop. And my job is to see and build connections between the earthly and the sacred. This almost looks like a church. <laughs> On my best days, my best days are when I see no difference at all between the earthly and the sacred. When the holy and the earthly are so woven together that life just seems to break through even when you least expect it. And I see that when I see the knitting together of people where there previously had been tears in the social fabric. Whenever we reach across tables, across differences of ethnicity, race, gender, religion, economic class, even, yes, across political parties, that's work of utmost importance. I call it holy whenever I see it. I see community when people put aside hardened ideology, even theology, and seek simply to be human kind, both human and kind, among those in our neighborhoods. When we volunteer to be mentors or tutors at local public schools, or for at-risk children, when we simply have lunch at the local soup kitchen, or visit those in prison, or in hospice, or the homebound, we become weavers. We weave when we faithfully keep vigil with one who struggles to recover from addiction. We weave when we participate in book groups, or discussions across differences of opinion. We weave when we pick up the trash by the side of the road or from our river banks and are cautious about our carbon footprint. If the church has benefited society, it's because it's due to Jesus' call to each of us to be holy engaged in the work of holy weaving. 
Every time we see a person as a bearer of God's image, we weave. And every time we pigeonhole someone into the isolating labels of gender, ethnicity, nationality, race, sexual orientation, or even political party, we are rippers. To seek to fulfill our baptismal vow is to uphold, and to uphold the dignity of every human being is to weave. The Episcopal Church's community weaves when we work in partnership with the Black Heritage Trail to share the wonderful, though often excruciatingly painful histories of the African Americans that preceded us and who are among us, who helped build community in the live free or die state. We are seeking to find lasting, effective healing to lives shattered by the opioid crisis. And we believe this is as much a spiritual crisis as it is a health crisis. And so we believe it important that religious communities across the spectrum educate ourselves and leverage the personal and spiritual resources we can to help restore the freedom and dignity of every human being. My church also takes seriously the risk to our society if we do not address the widening opportunity gap facing our youth. The Charitable Foundation's New Hampshire Tomorrow Initiative has helped focus me and our church, focus our attention on this issue. And the Episcopal Church has a legacy, as you may know, of elite private schools. And some of them have produced some amazing citizens and leaders in art, politics, literature, journalism, and religion. But let me tell you, I am much more concerned about and committed to how we will help our public schools to form persons of curiosity, compassion, competence, and courage. Thank you. And so many in our congregations are now mo mobilized, thanks to the leadership of the foundation, I have to say, to provide mentors, tutors, big brothers and big sisters, and other healthy ways to support children and youth who have less access to social capital. And it was the New Hampshire Charitable Foundation that invited us into that holy work, and it has been life enhancing for all involved. I feel rightly challenged by the state of our communities and neighborhoods, and I honestly feel the work that so many of you do in partnership with this foundation is also sacred work, as it seeks to heal and repair the torn fabric of our society, our economy, and our planet. Forgive me for saying so, for preaching. But this work is holy, and that's why I'm here, to support it with my heart, my mind, my soul, and my substance. And so we're going to hear next from some people who are building community in New Hampshire in some extraordinary ways. A mother who lost her son to suicide and who has found strength in community and has pushed her community to do better, working to prevent such tragedy for other families. And a young couple who are helping create through their work and in their town center the kind of community that many people think they'd have to travel to find. One gentleman who works for a nonprofit recovery center and saw the critical need for mentors for young people of color in his community. And so he started a program in his non-existent spare time to provide that for them. These folks are all weavers, and you'll recognize those patterns. And I hope we can name that and celebrate that tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> 